Hello and welcome to the CBMM and Partners Mobility Leadership Debate. The mobility sector is undergoing radical change and transformation. Automotive product makers and mobility service providers are responding to heightened challenges, new demands, new technologies and new players in the marketplace. Increasing electrification, the development and introduction of autonomous driving and AI and a drive for sustainable technologies are all increasingly important drivers of change. Today I'm joined by a number of recognised leaders driving and responding to these changes to discuss mobility trends and challenges. What's the single biggest challenge facing the mobility sector today? Health, the health of the industry. For me the industry has a huge challenge, especially the car industry. Um, because uh, it's going to have to adapt, it's going to have to create a new business model. The margins uh, on making electric cars uh, at the moment are not the same as the margins are making um, internal combustion vehicles, but it's a very important industry. And I think we have to all be um, conscious of keeping a robust car industry is key for society, for our, you know, for our economies. So I think in this disruption there is the risk that the car industry may, may suffer a lot, and I think that's something that we have to keep in mind. John? Uh, I think that's um, very well put. I think that the, the, the real challenge is, is how to manage the change from old to new and to develop a new state which is economically viable. Um, at the end of the day, the car industry has been around for over 100 years, very um, you know, standard, stable, with lots of you know, infrastructure that's been pretty much unchanged throughout the period. Uh, now you have a situation where the combination of disruptive trends and disruptive tech has really turned it on its head. So of course, as more electric vehicles are part of the, the infrastructure, we need more of this charging uh, infrastructure in place, where in the large urban centers or depots or fleet operators, the space is already defined sometimes. It's tough to fit this equipment in there as we, as we do that, both physically and, and electrically, making sure the grid can handle it. So Good. that's probably our biggest fear. Rodriguez? Yes, yeah, we've been working quite a lot in the changing, in the materials point of view, what is going to be the new trends of batteries and how the chemical composition and the oxides can help and also uh, maximize and improve the performance. Well, I think one big challenge is for companies to stay ahead of competition and bring new mobility solutions and services to the market as quick as possible. And there are some elements that I think are very important to be solved in that matter, which is, first of all, what do customers want? So what is the real expectation? And then is their technology available? Is the technology mature? Um, and is the technology affordable? What type of infrastructure needs to be put in place for the solution to work? And last but not least, what about regulations and, and laws that need to be discussed? John, on that, could you outline how the world is moving from automotive products to mobility services and what that means? Um, traditionally, car, car companies have made a little bit of money selling cars, a little bit of money financing cars, a little bit of money um, uh, servicing cars. Um, but with costs that were being built into cars increasingly for environmental reasons, safety reasons, etc., etc., margins have been shrinking dramatically. Um, and so the, the manufacturers have been seeking ways of replenishing that revenue. Um, and that's been very difficult. I mean, m many of these mobility services don't yet make, make money. Uh, because without that, it's going to be as difficult to, to make it sustainable in the long term. Uh, Renata, Porsche are almost 90 years old now, so how, how has the transition been there? Well, I think um, the transformation needs to occur in, in two dimensions. One dimension is really the business model innovation, so being able to, to bring new mobility services, um, shared services, for example, and on the other hand, a product innovation. Uh, therefore, the company needs to get very customer-centric. Uh, it needs to build a solid strategy uh, to develop an innovation-driven and agile organization of course, battery and battery charging is, is fundamental to the success of electric vehicles. What do you think needs to, to happen to, to make that easier and to remove range anxiety? Yeah, well, we, uh, 
we like to try to make it more range enablement than range anxiety, but we try to build a fast charging, DC fast charging systems that help enable more use cases. As these batteries get bigger and bigger, the power density is changing, the energy density of batteries changing, you need the need to charge faster uh, starts uh, as a requirement. So it's the same thing in the transportation segment as we're packaging batteries in these vehicles, make sure they're safe, and, and but they get bigger and bigger. So. Uh, Rodrigo, over 80 million cars sold globally in 2018. What are the technical challenges that need to be met in order to make them um, safer and more sustainable and, and greener? And the challenge is light weighting is something very important and it is one of the equation that Niobium Alloys can help. So it's one of the projects as well that we launched in Goodwood together with uh, Extreme E and the body in white uh, showing the case that it was lighter and safer. So 80 million production yearly, we have a huge challenge to improve the sustainability, the emissions, and also to improve safety. That is all about Niobium strategy is working in these terms to improve it. Extreme E, tell us a little bit about that. Extreme E is a completely radical new um, sport that is going to be the platform for SUVs, electric SUVs. Mm -hmm to uh, showcase the performance in any kind of um, environment. We're going to take these races to the most extreme and most damaged um, ecosystems. What evidence are you seeing for accelerated tech transfer into mainstream vehicles? Uh, a lot of the experience and the data they're collecting in, in, um, in the championship uh, and the software development they're, they're doing, it's immediately applicable to uh, road cars. Um, some of the I mean, some of the technology, like the powertrains, are being also used in some of the models that some of the brands are putting on the road. Uh, John, what, what kinds of collaboration are needed and, and partnerships? Uh, what, what partnerships are forming already? Traditional companies like Ford and, and VW have to try and maintain economies of scale and try, try and um, develop um, hugely expensive technologies together in order to try and save costs and, and move towards viability. Uh, the role of the supply base is, is absolutely critical as well and, and having good suppliers that bring forward technology is, is, you know, is hugely important. There is a huge challenge with trying to work between large corporate companies and very small entrepreneurs, leading edge startups and so forth is the challenge. Rodrigo, how have you found the partnerships element of It's fantastic. We, when we join uh, Formula E, uh, we find out that I could see OEMs there and the openness to discuss about technology and partnership. Bringing the OEMs, bringing the auto parts, the uh, energy company, also the startups, and interact and talk about technology and business and how we're gonna solve this problem. And it's very good for Niobium, it's very good for our partners, and it's very good for the develop of new technology. Pat, are you involved in a lot of, uh, you know, cross-pollination of, of technologies? Yeah, well, that, that's part of it, is, is always trying to enable technologies and validate the solutions. That helps create new use cases and business uh, models as well. Let's move it on a little bit to, uh, what, is, what is the Porsche and, for that matter, the, the VAG group, on electrification, but also on AI and, and autonomous? What are the plans there? Uh, in terms of electrification, the offensive is aggressive and is, is set uh, for the next 10 years. And uh, for autonomous driving and AI, uh, I think there are two important elements. One is really building partnerships uh, with tech companies, but on the other hand, also developing these capabilities inside of the company. So I want to ask you all, what is your dream of mobility in the next 10 years, in 20 years time, what, what, what do you see as the future? You charge your phone once a year, hmm. or you charge your car after 5,000 miles. That's my dream. Of course, you know, <laughs> I said I'm thinking big, yeah. but that would be, you know, if someone cracks the battery problem, that will change the world. Things are still um, in parcels, um, and I'd like to see it much more integrated. Renata, your vision of the future? Well, since I travel a lot, my dream is that I can wake up in the morning and tell my, mobi my mobility integrated system that I need to be in Berlin by 4 o'clock p.m. and it will give me right away my complete itinerary based on my preferences 
and who knows, my, my journey may, may be in a passenger drone. By just someone plugging in and it's all done for you and no one has to think about it or do anything, but, but to optimize the use and make it all work together, that, that would be a very nice thing to have, I think. Integration would be fantastic and important. And then in the, our point of view, the materials will probably facilitate it, but they have also a challenge how you produce more using less material as well in more sustainable way. So that is the challenge. The dream is how we integrate all these concepts yeah. together. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And another really, really interesting discussion. <laughs>